YouTube, it's Kayla, it's Friday, and I'm here to review a movie, but I'm reviewing a TV show. Um, pardon me if I start wiping my eyes, I'm not crying. My allergies are going berserk, and so this eye is a consistent fountain of tears for some reason, I'm not sure why. So I'm not crying, I'm just spouting tears. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I got disc one and two of Six Feet Under in the mail, and I watched disc one, and I went to go get disc two and put it in the DVD layer, and it was completely cracked. Like, it was completely cracked. Like, you could move. It was horrible. So I had to send it back and get the other ones, and in the process of getting... I, getting a replacement for disc two, I got disc three and four as well, and season one only contains four discs. So yesterday I had no classes, I wasn't feeling too good because of my allergies, so I watched disc two, three, and four all yesterday. <laughs> so I'm going to review Six Feet Under the first season because it's amazing. See, the, here's disc four. Okay, and this is how, see this? The crack started here and went all the way up and it was completely disconnected from each other. Like you could go like that. It was ridiculous. So I watched it yesterday and the show's amazing. I'm gonna read you the synopsis. Uh, this is a darkly comical HBO television series. Follows the members of a dynamic but dysfunctional family that operates a funeral home it has an ironically grim but intriguing premise. Each episode is based on the death and extenuating circumstances of the family's current client. Captivating, original, and utterly engaging. Uh, it's the brainchild of screenwriter Alan Ball. And I did a review on <laughs> True Blood Season 1 a few weeks ago with Alan Ball as the creator. The man is... Um, the man's kind of amazing. He wrote American Beauty and uh, and is the creator of Six Feet Under and True Blood. And he's, he's very genius. And he has a very good way of injecting reality into um, an unrealistic situation. So, for example, this family owns a funeral home, the Fisher family, and Fisher and Sons Funeral Home in Los Angeles. Um, and they, the pilot, spoiler if you don't want, but I mean, whatever. The pilot, in the pilot, in like the first ten minutes, the dad dies. And the rest of the series is about the two, there's two sons, a daughter, and a wife. And the two sons were left the business in the will. And the whole series is about how the two sons take over the business and... Throughout the first season, all of them are seeing their dad, like, and he's talking to them, and that's very unrealistic, but he injects realistic, a realistic style into it, and it's so easy, and, um, and it flows so well that you have no, you have no hard time believing anything that's going on, and it was the same way in True Blood, I mean, vampires, but he injects such a realistic style into it that you will automatically accept whatever the, sh the show is telling you and um, I like that about him a lot. The show has um, a lot of good characters. The, the oldest son Nathaniel comes back. He was living in Seattle or something and he comes back because his dad for Christmas but then his dad dies and he lives there now and then he has the, the middle child Mike not Michael played by Michael C. Hall. David, he's very uptight, but he has a secret, and um, it's just amazing to watch him. Uh, the youngest is Claire, and she's 17, and she's she's brilliant. And, um, and then there's also, like, Freddy Rodriguez plays Rico, and Rico is, uh, works for the Fisher and Sons. He, um, uh, reconstructs people who are just like for viewings and my favorite characters are Rico and David and Michael C. Hall and Freddie Rodriguez are amazing 
and uh, he's Michael C. Hall is just brilliant. I just he the way he embodies the character. Like I've seen a few episodes of Dexter. I've not watched the. I don't have HBO people, so I'm probably going to Netflix Dexter. But I've seen a few episodes because my dad likes it, and and um. You know, so I was going into this knowing that he was Dexter, seeing a few episodes, kind of knowing what he was like in Dexter, and he just embodies a completely different person so well that I, you watch, you know how some people have a defining role, and you go into a, a show, a new show that they're in, or a movie that they're doing, that you're just like, I can't, I can't watch this because all I see is that character. That's not the case. He just completely, he's just a completely different, he just, I, he's a brilliant, brilliant actor. And Freddy Rodriguez I just love because he's funny and, um, but he's also able to be emotional and I like several movies that he's been in, so I enjoy the man. And it's just a good mixture of constant grief because they're in they're dealing with death and their dad's death and death of other people and the family members of those people so it's constant grief injected with um humor um love uh and grow i don't know it's just brilliant it's brilliant and i thought that the season one ending was amazing because the show so so much grim stuff is going on around them, and they're so they got so far in their lives within the thirteen episodes, and it's just good to see. It wasn't a sad ending to the season, which is good to see because I have a feeling it's five seasons. I have a feeling that it's not always going to be that way because shows like that never are, and so it it was good to for the first season to just ease you into it and then you're you're you know you're left with a satisfying uh feeling that for now these characters are okay and we'll see what happens next season so yes yeah, season one of six feet under i highly recommend it it's amazing and brilliant and i really have no flaw with this tv show and it seems that i'm discovering tv way after it's gone and it makes me sad <laughs> i'm not crying but i'm glad that it i'm glad that we have a media like dvd where you can always go back and get it so have a good weekend scott's tomorrow enjoy the end of august and i will see you guys next friday bye